Hello, this is Tim Jones of Accelerate Computer Training with another practical training video. This time, how to create dynamic drop-down lists in FileMaker Pro 11, and then how to make them even more useful with a simple layout technique. A dynamic value list displays values from a table of data, like this class table, as menu choices on a field. It simplifies data entry and keeps your database optimized by storing only the values of the primary key fields rather than the fully spelled out labels. In this simple school example, we'll start with tables for classes and terms. Now as you enter values like fall 2011 and spring 2012, each value should be given a unique ID number. Likewise with the classes. These ID numbers are critical. They're used to uniquely identify the class or the term by its ID number so that we don't have to spell out the full phrases each time. That's an important part of database optimization. FileMaker can easily create those unique identifiers if you simply create a key field in each table, like class ID in the class table, to use the auto enter serial number feature and make sure prohibit modification of value during data entry is turned on. I entered more data into class and terms and now in a third table schedule we want to be able to enter data into the two foreign key fields to say that we are running this class in this term and this class in this term and so on. Let's see how to do that. Here's a fresh copy of that schedule table. No records. Looking at it in layout mode, we see just two fields. The class ID field where we want to enter the ID number of a class to be scheduled and the term ID field where we want to enter the ID number of a term or semester in which that class is going to take place. Obviously, memorizing ID numbers so that we can enter them in manually is not something us humans are any good at. But a drop-down list or pop-up menu can make this very easy work. You simply select a field that you want to attach a value list to, come over to the inspector, and in the Data tab, choose a control style of, well, let's go with drop-down list and see how that looks, out, looks first. It asks, what value list do you want to attach to this field? And I don't have any, so we're going to go and create it. Clicking this pencil takes you into the Manage Value List dialog box. Click the New button and give the value list a name. To make it dynamic, based on the data that we defined in our class table, we'll say Use Values from Field. That opens this dialog box where we then get the opportunity to specify what table the data is stored in and what field or two fields we want to have displaying on this value list, this drop-down list of, of choices. Now keep in mind our goal is to specify the ID number of the class, not the name of the class. So we want this value list to display ID numbers for us, or at least to be based on those ID numbers. But again, since us humans have a hard time knowing what an ID number represents, we can also display values from a second field and tell the value list to display the value in that class field, which is the more descriptive name of the class, like geometry and chemistry and English. Okay. At this point, let's just leave the settings as they are, sorting the values using the first field and not turning on show values only from second field. And then we'll come back and alter those choices and see how it plays out. OK. OK again. There's our new class's value list. OK again. And now the class ID field is going to be set to display as a drop-down list. We'll do the same thing with term ID. Selecting it, making its control style a drop-down list, creating a new value list for it called terms, pointing this value list or basing it on the data in the term table, starting with the ID field and then for our sake as humans also displaying the value in the more descriptive label field. 
OK, OK, and OK again. Now, as we save and exit the layout and go to make a new record, we get a value list. Notice it's sorted by the ID numbers, 1 through 9, not alphabetically by the class names, which would probably be more useful to us. Nevertheless, when we choose one, it punches in that class's ID number. Likewise with the terms. When we choose a term, it types in that term's ID number. So we don't have to memorize the ID numbers. FileMaker's got them listed for us. The only problem is that now we see those ID numbers instead of the more descriptive labels that we would like to see. Well, let's remedy that. We'll go back into Edit Layout, select the field, and let's try to display it as a pop-up menu instead. Likewise with the term ID field, pop-up menu, save, exit, and now we see the whole deal, the ID numbers and the names. So pop-up menus give you at least one possible solution for a way to see, uh, see and enter data. Now here's another approach or something that might supplement what we just did. I'm going to go into File, Manage, Value Lists, and go in and edit this class's value list. And we're going to tell it to show values only from the second field, meaning this field over here, class, not sorting based on, or not showing the ID numbers at all. Notice that when you check this box, it automatically switches the sort order to the second field, since that's going to be the only one showing. OK. OK again. I'll do the same thing with terms. Edit, specify field, show values only from second field. OK, and OK, and OK. And now we don't see the ID numbers. As when we go to do data entry, make a new record, you can choose. Knowing that you're still entering the ID numbers the way the data wants to be entered, but we're seeing, in terms of the interface, the user interface, we're seeing those nice values. Pop-up menus are, are special in that way, uh, but there is a shortcoming, and that is, as this list gets longer and longer, there's no way to create kind of a, a type ahead or a way to scan down the list just by typing the first letter or two of the entry. So let's see how we can do that next.